You heard uh, at the beginning when Bonnie came up and introduced me that I had the very good fortune of writing my first book last year. Uh, it was uh, a really exciting project for me, especially because I got to talk to a lot of folks just like you. I did tons of interviews with practice managers, uh, healthcare administrators, physicians, office managers, lab managers, unit directors, talking to them about their jobs, about their challenges, uh, and about the fires that they're asked to put out every day. And one of my favorite stories that I heard while doing these interviews was from a practice manager who told me about a time when she was sitting in her office and one of her physicians popped in to go over something not important to our story. But right before he left, he said, oh, by the way, I wanted you to know that the blonde girl and the skinny guy out front seem to really be working out. And she stopped and said, what, what makes you say that? And he said, no, they just, they seem like they've picked up on things and I always see them smiling and seem like they're doing a good job. And she said, that's really surprising that you would say that because they are counting the days until they can transfer out of here. And he said, whoa, why is that? Now these two had a pretty good relationship and had worked together for a long time. So it was pretty easy for her to say what she said next. She said, well, for one thing, they've been here for three months and you don't even know their names. There's a ton of research that tells us people need to believe that the people they work for and with care about them as a person beyond the tasks and responsibilities of the job. And this is particularly troublesome in healthcare where we have finally given voice to a void in preparing leaders for this. ACGME, the American College of Graduate Medical Education, a few years ago started publishing a leadership development curriculum for physician leaders and residency programs across the country. And they specifically say there is a void in preparing young physician leaders for what they call interpersonal understanding. You know what I call that? Small talk. The ability to connect with people in a personal kind of way. And if you think about it, that is held true at all levels of healthcare, isn't it? When we hire someone who's clinically competent and capable, and it turns out that they're really nice and approachable, we treat it as a kind of bonus. <laughs> when the reality is that skill set is just as important as any clinical ability that they bring to that role. Because when that skill set isn't present, drama goes up and people go out the door, both team members and patients. That's why we have to ask people about their weekends. We have to ask people about their vacations. We have to ask people about their holiday plans. Let me ask you, do you think it's important that you know whether or not somebody who works for you has children? Yes? Yeah. Do you think it's important to know that someone who works for you is the primary caregiver to an elderly parent? Do you think it's important to know that someone who works for you desires to go back to school and eventually move into a management position? Yes. Yeah. Because all of these things influence who they are and how they show up at work. We are no longer living in a command and control leadership era where you should just be grateful that you have a job, thank you very much, and show up and go to work and do what I tell you. We know people need to feel valued in a variety of ways, and specifically as a person. The truth is, pets die, kids get sick, and relationships end. All of those things have an impact on who we are and how we show up. And if your expectation is that people should check that at the door, and that an inability to do so is some kind of a sign of weakness or a lack of focus or commitment, you're doing this wrong. The truth is, we have to be able to meet people where they're at to help them navigate all the different ways that life impacts us when we get to work. It's incumbent upon you to be able to notice those kinds of things. All of you right now, I'm sure, can tell when somebody's just not themselves. It's what you do about it that matters. It's pulling that person aside and saying, hey, you seem a little out of sorts today. Are you okay? And if you've cultivated some trust, they might feel comfortable, comfortable enough with you to say, well, you know what? My mother-in-law fell and broke her hip and it's really bad. 
and my wife's over at the hospital right now, and it's just kind of a stressful day. I'm, I'm probably not all here. Your ability to respond in that moment with caring and with compassion and less of a concern about the schedule makes all the difference in the world to that person. If you can, in that moment, say, give me your stuff, go. When they get through that drama, when they get through those interpersonal challenges that are taking place for them outside of work, they're going to run through a wall for you later. And they're going to pick up the pieces for others when they are going through tough times as well. We have to demonstrate that we genuinely and authentically care about the people who work for us and that we interact with.